My name is Margaret McCain, and I desire a better Canada, a country where all citizens, regardless of age, race, gender, religion, socioeconomic status, or sexual orientation, have the opportunity to follow their dream and contribute to their full potential. I want to begin with a story. In the middle of the past century, a young man from rural New Brunswick invited a young woman from rural Nova Scotia to have a 10 cent cup of coffee. This led to more dates where they shared their dreams for the future. His dream was to start a business of his own. The following year they married and soon thereafter returned to his home community with his brother and partner and launched their business venture from the product of the land, the lowly potato. They built what is now a multinational frozen french fry corporation and all they knew about french fries was that they tasted good. <laughs> that young man was my husband. Canada is a country where such dreams can become reality with hard work, energy, commitment and perseverance. Our country values and nurtures these characteristics. We place a high value on humanity with a low tolerance for corruption. We have high expectancy for truth and transparency and low tolerance for racism and discrimination. We respect and welcome different cultures and faiths. We reject bigotry, misogyny, and hatred. In 2016, the World Economic Forum released its first list of the world's top 20 countries. Canada ranks number two behind Germany. And for quality of life, we rank number one. The stability of our political system, our access to clean air and water, our comprehensive education and health services contribute to our top spot. A number two ranking is excellent, a very good place to be, and we can be proud of it. But before we begin cheering, let's take a closer look at the red flags flapping, income inequality, child poverty, the gender wage gap. 42% of Canadians are functionally illiterate. Across Canada, a high percentage of high school students graduate with a general certificate. Translated, this means they are not literate or numerate. In this knowledge-based economy and highly technical world, they cannot process written information or operate a highly technical piece of industrial equipment or operate the high-tech cars and trucks. Four million Canadians live with food insecurity, hunger, that is more than 10% of our population. Is this acceptable? One in five Canadians suffer from mental illness. Unemployment is 6.9%, youth unemployment 13.2%, and how much of this is due to lack of job skills? We're not even close to meeting world standards in greenhouse gas emissions, and our record with Indigenous peoples is shameful. Intergenerational trauma of enforced residential schools is perpetuated by the continued underfunding of health, education, and social services at half the rate of other Canadians. We do have serious problems confronting us, and the response must be both national and international. Yet, humans have a distinct capacity to innovate, create technologies, and find solutions to complex problems. But our task today, indeed even our very survival as a species, is to close the gap between rich and poor and ensure that future generations have the capacity to create democratic, pluralistic, and sustainable societies. Our ability to innovate is challenged by inequality, but we know how to intervene. And there are many good examples of effective interventions. The most effective interventions take place early in life, be between conception and age five, during the first 2,000 days of life, when the foundations of learning, health, and behavior are established. Integrating care with early education provides equal opportunity for all by addressing family poverty, supporting women's labor force participation, and most importantly, prioritizing the needs of the next generation through quality preschool education for two, three, or four years. Canada is well placed to expand early education by building onto our public education system to create quality, affordable, accessible programs 
with constancy of curriculum and well-supported professionals. Early education, it is the great equalizer. I began with a story, and I'd like to end with one. My friend, Dr. Ann Sherman, who is Dean of Education at the University of New Brunswick, has a doctoral student from Bhutan. She lives here in Fredericton uh, with her two young sons. During the Christmas season, the first one actually, they heard a lot about the birth of Jesus and his life. One day, the seven-year-old commented to Anne that this guy, Jesus, was a lot like Buddha. And Anne agreed, adding that they both believed in a peaceful and loving world. In Canada, Jesus and Buddha can be good neighbors. But we must never take these values for granted. We must stand guard and protect them. Thank you.